Hello and in today's STM32 programming we are going to be hijacking the vector table of the STM32. So to start with the data sheet, the nested vector interrupt controller, you can reassign the variables here where your interrupt triggers. So you can target specific functions. So you can see here the priority stack of each interrupt by default. Stuff like the hard fault handler which we are specifically going to be targeting today. The reset vector. So the reset vector is where your code starts from let's say different types of faults usage fault as we call and then we have the different interrupts like your dma channels your adc one and two depending on which stm32 you're using your vector table might change based on your flash size and density now for the code we look at our startup assembly file now if you scroll down to the bottom ish you'll see a gpfn vector in your startup now this allocates all your vectors in assembly. Now we are going to translate this to C. So effectively, we are just copy pasting this and keeping the names the same. So first thing we add is a data structure, which I've already pre-prepared here for. So this is the entire vector table. If you look at it side by side to the assembly, you see this dot word. The dot word corresponds to 32 bits. So four bytes of data. So it takes up four spaces in memory then you correlate that back to the data sheet you can see the address is 0 then 0 4 0 8 so in steps of 8 bytes the each vector is offset so we have our entire vector table here now something to note you need to make your vector table packed and aligned to 512 bytes for cortex m okay and next we need to declare our vector table so we say io io which translates to volatile so we don't want our compiler optimizing this and if we look at that open declaration it's just a hash define for volatile so vector table and our rand table so we have that set up now we want to do a new function which is going to be void and that's going to be set vector table and that's going to take in void parameters okay and then we want to do a mem cp so we are copying data and for that we need also hash include ring dot h this should be in brackets since we are getting it from our compiler libraries then we want to copy into ram table and we want to copy at our starting address of flash so it's going to be void 0x8 and we get our starting address from our linker script so this will be this address so our flash origin so that's our flash origin and then we want to say the size of our vector table yeah now we're copying from our flash memory into our ram so we have effectively a duplicate of all the pointers contained in here so if we place a breakpoint over here and we save and build let's just see this should be star let's just see here maybe we should try ram table into the side yeah, it's still unhappy with me why is that invalid conversion from volatile void to void okay so we may class that also as a void pointer okay then it's happy okay so we place a underscore not here just so we can place the breakpoint and see what's contained in ram table and we need to call the function right after our system clock has initialized not necessarily where you need to call it but it's better to call it after hull init and system clock init gpio doesn't matter that much okay we place a breakpoint we go into debug mode set our debugger not open OCD I want second J link line yeah. okay, so I'm going to delete all my expressions and what we want to watch is a RAM table close that down we allow it to run tap into and it has stopped at the not okay so you can see here I need to convert all of this now to hexadecimal at number format set that to hex now you can see all of the function locations so if you translate these function locations just for interest sake let's demonstrate that if i take that number put it in a brace put a star in front mm, okay apparently it doesn't work okay so your reset handler start of your program nvme hard fault handler i need to remember where this is but the fact of the matter is you're effectively copying a bunch of flash addresses and then your stack as well so this is where your stack will be located in your ram this 2000 value you can verify this looking at the linker again you can see 
the origin of the RAM is this hex address, which will be offset over here. Okay, okay. So for the next option, we need to hijack the vector table offset. So we say SVC Vort of Vitor or whatever. The vector table offset is equals to the RAM table as a UN32 underscore T. And we cast the RAM table itself. So this is the new RAM table that we're taking control of. We set that to the vector table offset. So our vector tables are now pointing to this variable in RAM. Okay, so next we want a function to point to. So for this demonstration, I'm going to take the hard fault handler and point it to my own custom function. So we're going to say X turn and that's going to be C. And that's going to be custom hard fault handler. And it's going to take in void parameters. Okay, now we also need to add. It's going to return no values. This actually is not going to return at all. Technically, you should define it as a no return function. The X turn over here, we are preventing name mangling because this is a fixed function. Okay, now our vector table, we're going to take our RAM table and say hard fault handler is equals to, we cast it as a UN32 and we take the function address. So this will be effectively a callback and change the existing hard fault handler that is located in flash from our startup.s. So all these vector tables go get written into flash. So the difference now is we are making our vector table volatile. So it's loaded into RAM. So we add more breakpoints and we have a quick look at how it looks in our debugger. And we step into now I want the address of RAM table just to see it. And now we can see the address of the RAM table. It is at 4000. Oh, and something to note also, the RAM table needs to align also to the 512. And that's already handled by the structure itself. So the other thing we want to look at is our vector table offset. You can see the vector table offset is zero currently, which is technically this 8000 address, which is the start of flash. So we step over, then we can see nothing has changed. We change it to the next one. Now you can see the vector table offset is equivalent to the RAM table address. And now our hard fault handler, we want to look at that as well. And that's going to be at address 1d8. Okay. When we look at our physical RAM table, where is our, where our hard fault handler? So our hard fault handler is currently located at 32f. So if I step this code one more time, we're going to 1c9. And our custom fault handler is located at 1c8. Let's see, 1c9, 1c8. Just double check that. 1c9, 1c8. Okay, so there's a discrepancy here of 1. It should be identical. Let's see, if I add plus 1 here, it should give me the correct address. Let's run the debug again. And take away this right point. It's not serving much of a purpose anymore. Okay, we're at the knob again. So our custom fault handler is 1c8. RAM table reset fault handler is 1c8, which is also not correct. Yeah. Let's just double check this. Okay, so to trigger the hard fault handler, I'm going to see if this address is correct. I want to place a knob in our hard fault handler and a while one. So it will just sit and loop infinitely in the hard fault handler. Okay, yeah. So we're going to trigger the hard fault handler with an invalid memory access. So we say in PTR, PTR equals null. Then we say PTR of index two is equals one. So I'm accessing invalid memory. So it should trigger the hard fault handler because I'm accessing invalid memory. Then we start debugging again. It should stop at holy nut. Yeah. And we debug again. We set our RAM table. We can see the hard fault handler is 1c9 and the custom fault handler is 1c8. So if I continue and trigger the invalid access, it will go over to WA1. And now we can see we're at the custom hard fault handler. So this is working correctly. You don't need to offset this. So just take note that your function will be one off from your actual function pointer. And so now we have a custom hard fault handler. All right. So that's a basic introduction to manipulate your vector table on an STM32. A like, share, comment, and subscribe will always be appreciated. Thank you. Have a nice day.